Now, President Cyril Ramaphosa denies that he has violated his oath of office, denying any wrongdoing in the Palapala saga. The president met yesterday's deadline imposed by the parliamentary panel to respond to allegations levelled against him. The panel is assessing whether there is enough evidence for the impeachment of Ramaphosa by parliament following a draft motion by the ATM. The panel now has 10 days to prepare its report for the Speaker of the National Assembly. President Ramaphosa has always made certain that throughout his tenure as president, he abides by his oath of office and sets an example in his respect for the Constitution, its institutions, due process, and the rule of law. President Ramaphosa categorically denies that he violated his oath in any way and denies that he is guilty of any of the allegations made against him. All right, uh, let's discuss. We're joined by political analyst Seisman Mutlaung. Uh, Seisman, great to have you as always. So the president has responded. What happens now? I, I think, uh, Francis, what would be happening from now is for the committee to look at his submissions and from those submissions determine the extent to which he had violated the law against the submissions that have been presented by other parties. So it's mainly comparing evidence and seeing which evidence is weightier than the other. And from there, maybe make a pronouncement that the pres there are certain grounds upon which the president could be uh, prosecuted. And then the parliament will take it from there, whether it will be a process of impeachment, it will come out from those recommendations. And, and 10 days isn't a long time to do this, uh, to look at something quite weighty. The public protest, uh, protector's investigation also continues, uh, doesn't it? Uh, I, I'm wondering, will parliament have any access to those records or records like that to ensure that the president is being consistent in his response? Now, this is where it becomes tricky, the extent to which there is institutional collaboration on this case. But I think from my look at it, there is no communication between these institutions because they are aligned in such a manner that they are independent from each other. And then in that sense, the public protector will make her determination, parliament will also make her determination. It will now at the ex or the release of these reports, that the public would look at the consistency to at which the president has been. And I think the president is careful to continue with the same message so that there are no contradictions at the end of the day when these separate institutions release their reports. And this has been a strategy, I think, from the opposition or those who are interested, who have approached these institutions that there is not single avenue. So for them, it's if one institution absorbs him, possibly one could catch him. So they are they're taking their chances in that manner. Will we, as the public, know the details of what the president has said in both cases? Uh, let's remember that there was huge pressure for the public to know uh, what the former president, Zuma, said regarding Nkandla, for instance. Yeah, this is another issue. Theoretically, in politics, we often say the executive operates in secrecy. There isn't a lot that is uh, exposed to the public, except when there are these legal processes and access to information followed. I, I think in this regard, there is that big public interest to it. To some extent, there would be a, 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 a redacted, maybe a redacted uh, submission, unless for Parliament, that's why I'm most hopeful that the statements would be made public as much as other commissions do, because here is an inquiry and it has to be in, in the interest of the public. Parliament is that institution, is that forum of the people. For me, it should make sense that these records and these submissions are made public from different parties, even the president himself. I agree. And, and one of the reasons is because his public response has been somewhat perplexing. Uh, if you've got nothing uh, to hide, then why not just to spill all the beans? Uh, because you, you can't caught, be caught out in a lie. He's chosen mm. to speak mainly through these official um, channels. Do you find that perplexing still? 
This is very interesting of Mr. Ramaphosa because when he came to power, he is that person who was on this card of transparency, anti-corruption, until there was a, a, a campaign about unsealing the bank statements for his ANC presidential campaign. And public comment was, you said you are going to be transparent. Then let's see the bank statements. And then comes this issue of Palapala, and he also is expected like that to be transparent. But we now see that trend that he has not been transparent as he promised. So this is that negative review of his presidency and his character, I think. And it is for now these institutions that the people are looking at, the institutions that should be representative of public interest to make this kind of reports open. Then there is that argument of, no, this is secret or this is some uh, executive uh, prerogative of a presidential classifications. So that is where our institutions are limiting. And theoretically as well, we also talk about accountability being a matter of political will and institutional design. Mm -hmm. Therefore, institutional design should be enabling to that extent where there is no political will then the institutions should enable accountability, should coerce those who are in the executive to be accountable. And now this is the problem of our political system, that it does not allow uh, this public to hold accountable those that are in power mm. when they are not really showing up for what they, they were elected for. All right, at least we will know uh, in roughly 10 days what this three-person panel thinks, uh, led by former Chief Justice Sandile Ngobo. After that, there, there still needs to be a majority to pass a motion in Parliament to continue with a full-blown inquiry. So presumably at that mm. point, even if there's a prima facie case, it can be put down by the ANC. But that would be problematic uh, because then presumably the president would have a cloud hanging over him for, forever. Yeah, definitely. And we saw this with President Zuma when he was in power, Parliament really, okay, here yeah, because the majority was the ANC, we now say the ANC dominated Parliament, protected Mr. Zuma. And this is what we expect of that cultural uh, inclination of the ANC, that it will protect the one who was at the helm. So historically, we've seen that happening and we probably would see the same happening because here, it was not even ANC that said, in parliament that there are grounds to investigate the president let's commission this kind of a committee it is the opposition that looked into this when parliament was also reluctant to look into the debates in parliament when opposition was asking for president to be accountable for the issues of palapala what we had was that there are other institutional investigations happening we don't need to duplicate what they are doing so that's typical of our South African parliament that is dominated by the ANC to defend the president. Yeah, ironically, the ANC is looking pretty united uh, when it comes to this uh, specific issue. Thank you so much, Seisman Mutlaung, political analyst. And uh, we can't see what the president said yet, uh, like he said, hopefully in future. Uh, but now this three-person panel uh, led by Sandile Ngobo has just 10 days to let parliament know if there's an apparent case against the president. Interesting times. That was Seisman Mutlaung.